Hello everyone and welcome to our Precision Livestock Farming Field Day. I'm Janice Sigford from the Department of Animal Science and I've been using technology to monitor animals for over 15 years, starting with uh, pedometers in beef cattle and then accelerometers on chickens, rumination monitors on dairy cows, and now computer vision with swine. And my name is Madonna Benjamin from the College of Veterinary Medicine. I have been fascinated and involved with technology to design ways to assist producers and stock people and to address where livestock can economically bridge with. So we'll be kicking things off with a quick introduction to the topic of precision livestock farming, PLF for short, and the production challenges it may help us address. Then we'll turn you over to some researchers who are working actively to develop PLF. They'll talk to you about some of the specific technologies they're using with animals in agriculture, ranging from dairy cattle to poultry. Throughout the field day, we encourage you to ask questions by texting in the chat box, and we will have opportunities for you to be seen and heard during interactive discussions with the speakers. So let's get started. Madonna, what comes to mind when you hear the term smart or precision farming? Precision farming. Well, I think first of using technology to monitor and manage crops, whether it's at the level of the field or plot or even down to the rows. And then another common area are the systems that monitor temperature and humidity in the barns. Yeah, barn management systems are probably what initially pop into most of our minds when we're thinking about using technology in animal agriculture. But when we're talking about precision livestock farming, this term implies something different and a bit deeper. So for our discussion, PLF is technology that measures at the level of the animal to provide you with information that lets you monitor and manage your herds or flocks down to the individual cow or pig or bird. So we aren't talking about technologies and management systems that operate at the level of the barn that many of you may already be using such as monitors for temperature or airflow, water use, or feed levels. But familiarity with those types of tech will make it easier to take the next steps to using technology that monitors the animals themselves. Oh, absolutely. And in fact, many of these existing barn management systems, such as Big Dutchman, Hogslat, Maximus, will likely provide the platform or infrastructure for the implementation of PLF. Oh, Janice, how did you become interested in PLF? Well, as an ethologist, I'm always searching for ways to capture information about animal behavior to answer my own research questions. And working with animals in commercial agriculture, I'm constantly confronted with trying to gather more information from animals that all look alike, are housed in large groups, and live in environments where it can be hard for me to watch or track an individual over time. It also takes a lot of time and effort to observe large numbers of animals over the course of an experiment or over the course of a production cycle. And the other problem I had was that my presence in the barn often changed the animal's behavior. So what I was recording and collecting data on might not have been what they were normally doing if I wasn't around. So I started turning to technology to remotely monitor animals in ways that wouldn't change their behavior. So I could see what they were really up to and how they were responding to different environments or management or other animals in their group or to issues like heat stress and disease. What about you, Madonna? What drew you to precision livestock farming? As a practicing veterinarian, I was frustrated with the increasing rate of livestock mortality and lameness within the industry, not just on our farms. And when you look back, we measure success based on key production indicators, such as growth or net number of animals raised. And yet our health assessments, such as lameness and changes in body condition, are highly subjective. In 2015, I read a publication on, in, on computers to detect ripeness of mangoes. This was based on the depression of the fruit flesh caused by the overripeness. So in other words, the computer detected overripe mangoes among thousands moving through a conveyor belt. And that was it for me. I believe if a computer could quantify the shape of a mango, we could quantify the body condition and lameness pattern of a pig. 
<laughs> That's great. I love that it all started with a mango for you. <laughs> Um, now we're using infrared cameras and related software to predict lameness patterns of sows, and we're using 3D imaging to quantify changes in body condition. Our goal is to give farmers a decision tool to compare these new quantitative assessments to their key production indicators. Okay, so between the two of us, we've used many of the various types of PLF technology that are being used to capture data from animals on farm. In the next few slides, I'll provide some examples of the main categories of each of the types of tech being used in PLF, leaving our speakers later to fill in some of the details. So first, there are a number of different kinds of body-worn sensors. These range from simple passive RFID tags that you may be familiar with that can be used to record animal visits to resources like feeders or link animal identities to weights on scale. There are also ultra wideband tracking systems that actively transmit information about animal location and movement. Many kinds of body worn sensors also use accelerometers to provide information about the amounts and kinds of animal activities that they're doing. Some of these are already commercially available for use with cattle and swine in particular, but there are body worn sensor systems that are being developed for use with poultry research too. A second category of PLF that's worth mentioning contains the technologies that monitor sound. These can either be remote using microphones positioned in barns or they can be body worn using microphones on the animals themselves. Most of the remote systems detect sound at the level of the entire group or pen, while the body worn sensors more typically link sounds down to the individual animal that made them. Either way, they capture acoustic information from animals that can provide insights into their health or feeding activity or even their distribution in the barn. Cough and rumination monitors are currently commercially available for pigs and cattle, and other monitors are being developed that analyze vocalizations or the sounds of animals' jaws moving. Another broad category of PLF uses remote-based technologies, a large group of which are vision-based. Computer vision encompasses a range of image-based technologies and their underlying processing systems. And these capture and analyze either video or still images of a variety of different types. In addition to capturing standard visible light photos or videos, like the ones we capture with our phones or traditional cameras, there are cameras that can capture images using infrared wavelengths. These can work to capture images under low light conditions or can render a thermographic image that shows the body temperature of the animal. Other camera cap technologies can capture three-dimensional images to create information about body shapes and depth that can be useful in estimating weight, body condition scores, or even individual animal identities. Most cameras are mounted in stationary positions in barns, often from the ceiling. Others might be mounted at animal level to use snout or nose patterns for facial recognition or to capture the temperatures of eyes or ears for more accurate thermographic information. However, some cameras may move along tracks, such as down the row of cages or aviaries in a commercial poultry barn. There are even some drones being tested for use in barns. Really? Drones? Yep. They're being developed for use in open barn poultry facilities, like the ones we commonly use to raise turkeys or broiler chickens. Though, as you can imagine, you have to be careful not to frighten the birds, and they do kick up some dust. Okay. So we have a lot of cool technology, but what are the practical challenges that can help us address in livestock and poultry production? Well, I think one of the biggest advantages PLF gives us is that ability to look at and manage animals as individuals. So this can help us uh, address labor and record keeping challenges, ranging from simply counting animals to tracking and treating problems at the individual animal level, like lameness, or to more precisely carry out routine management tasks like breeding, or to feed more efficiently uh, to meet a particular animal's needs. So essentially, PLF lets you go beyond the barn averages and, and to drill down further. Right, so this is really similar to using Smart Ag with crops, where you can zoom between information at the level of the whole farm down to the level of that single seed drilled in a particular row on that, on that field. 
So the seed is planted in a specific set of soil, has a specific set of moisture and solar conditions, and therefore that seed needs a particular amount of water or fertilizer or pesticide to grow to its best ability. PLF can bring the focus down to the level of each specific cow in the barn, pig in the pen, or chicken in the aviary. And then you can bring data from all those animals, plus other information on the farm together to get that big picture. Think about it. Having precise data from individual animals also improves traceability and transparency for quality assurance programs. It can improve in consumer trust and metrics to return on investments on treatments. And going back to my original interest in using technology, PLF can help us replace those subjective assessments to important conditions like lameness or body condition and standardize those measures over time and across people or facilities. Exactly. So another benefit to PLF is that we can use it as a tool as humans to work smarter. The best PLF really should let producers put our limited human labor to better use. So PLF can be used to do some of that repetitive, tedious work. Um, for example, performing activities that are time consuming, such as watching cattle for signs of estrus, or counting weaned piglets as they move to maintain inventories. People, PLF will let people redirect um, their efforts to tasks that require our smarts and human ingenuity to solve problems. So generating lots of data is a strength of PLF, but this can also pose a challenge. If data are continuously being generated in real time from every animal on a farm, across that animal's entire time on the farm, the data quickly mushroom into a nearly unmanageable, almost incomprehensibly large cloud of data. Right. An area of real need is a good user interface and data management system that pulls it all together and lets a producer make a decision and then take action. Yeah, the information from PLF isn't useful if it doesn't come together in a useful way. Exactly. So though, holding, though PLF holds a lot of promise, that doesn't mean it comes without challenges, right? Um, here are a few that we think are the big ones for all types of PLF in general. One of the first is keeping the systems affordable as they become commercialized. From our experience, many of the individual components that we use to build a PLF are relatively inexpensive. So you could build a do-it-yourself computer vision system with two cameras and a computer for less than $1,000. The challenge and the cost come when you bring in someone who has computer science skills that are needed to turn those images into valuable predictions and then to commercialize the system in a way that keeps it affordable, but of course um, also turns a profit for the company that made it. Another challenge is the cost of, of the system relative to the value of the individual animal. If you have a dairy cow, and she has considerable commercial value as an individual, as well as um, potential in terms of her milk yield, and she's likely to be in your herd for a while, investing in a $35 body-worn sensor for her that leads to either better uh, breeding success or milk yield, that'll be worth it. But a $35 tag for a broiler chicken, that eh, just isn't gonna fly. <laughs> this also leads to the issue that some of the returns that PLF bring may not lead to direct returns in terms of dollars. What I mean by this is that if you're able to continuously monitor your individual animals, you may be able to better ensure their welfare or reduce treatment costs or meet customers' needs for assurance. But you'll have to keep in mind that that return on investment is balanced by the cost of purchasing and using the tech. We also need systems that are tailored to, to fit the particular species and your particular farm. Systems developed under one set of conditions or one for one certain type or breed of animal will need to be adjusted before they can work under another set of conditions. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, we were to use PLF um, that was trained to predict lameness in pigs, but it was trained using finishing pigs, it might not be able to detect lameness in pigs with different body types or ways of walking, like pregnant sows. Some of the final challenges have to do with the data. First, PLF systems will be sending data either to central locations on farm or off farm for processing and storage. This means the farm needs internet uh, connectivity to move the data from where it's collected to where it's processed 
and then to the producer's phone or device where it'll be used. Another consideration as part of this data transfer to keep in mind is what type of data are being shared and who has access to it and who owns it. So considerations of privacy and data ownership need to be worked out from the start. Well, Madonna, what do you think? Have we set the stage well enough? Are we ready to turn this over to our panel of experts? Oh, I think so, Janice. But first, we want to remind our audience to please put questions into the chat box. It doesn't have to be questions. Maybe you have an idea. Um, so please share that. And or if you want to, you can speak up during the discussion sessions that will happen later. 